Hi, I'm June Scobie Rogers, founding chairman for Challenger Center. This year, you will hear more about the Challenger Space Shuttle in the news, and perhaps you will have questions. What happened and why? It all happened 25 years ago, long before you were born. People across our nation and around the world watched their televisions to see a terrible accident that happened to the Challenger Space Shuttle and its crew of seven astronauts. The commander, Dick Scobie, was my husband. Also on board the shuttle were six other astronauts and a beautiful teacher that everyone loved. Her name was Krista McAuliffe. Our families were in Florida to watch the joyous occasion of the launch. The students and their teachers all over the world were watching television to see the launch of the Challenger with America's first civilian, a high school teacher from New Hampshire, who wanted to fly in space and inspire students everywhere. Launch day for the 25th shuttle flight arrived on January the 28th, 1986. At dawn, that brisk morning at Kennedy Space Center, the Challenger crew, led by my husband, climbed aboard their space shuttle. It was so cold that icicles hung from the shuttle and gantry. Poised for liftoff, the orbiters sparkled in the cool brightness of the Florida sun. The engines ignited thunderous roar and the ground shook with millions of pounds of thrust. Our families, my children, and teachers' children, all of us were gathered together to watch the launch. As the shuttle lifted off the launch pad, our spirits soared. The air crackled with the roar of the engines and the cheers from the crowd. But then the unthinkable happened. While we were standing together at Kennedy Space Center, we watched the shuttle climb high into the bright blue sky. And then something terrible happened. We saw the shuttle rip apart and explode in the sky. Like our hearts, it shattered into a million pieces. Well, as you can imagine, it was very difficult to watch our loved ones die that day. And later to see it shown over and over again on television. Later in a letter my daughter wrote, my father died a hundred times a day on televisions all across the country. And since it happened so publicly, everyone in the country felt like it happened to them too. They wanted to say goodbye to American heroes. I, I just wanted to say goodbye to my daddy. It seemed everyone knew how the astronauts died, but our families wanted the world to know how they lived and why they were willing to risk their lives for space exploration. So we had an idea. I asked all the other families to join me at my house back in Houston to talk about ways to honor the crew, to pay tribute to them. We didn't want to build statues, but we wanted to continue their mission of education and exploration and discovery. We came up with the idea to build the Challenger Learning Centers so students, just like you, could experience the joy of space flight on your very own space simulation mission to the moon or to Mars and other exciting destinations. The Challenger crew were pilots and navigators, scientists and engineers, and a teacher. Because the astronauts worked together as a team to solve problems, conduct scientific experiments, explore space and make discoveries. We wanted to create similar opportunities for you so you could enjoy the same excitement and learn new skills and concepts about math and science. To tell how we accomplished our goal to build the Challenger Centers, I wrote a book that's just been published. The title is Silver Linings, My Life Before and After Challenger 7. This true story begins the summer I turned 13. It's all about how I learned to triumph over the tragedy in my young life. You see, my family was very, very poor. And my mother was often in the hospital. 
and my daddy died when I was a teenager. We had to move often and change schools. And other kids teased my brothers and teased me for the way we looked, our clothes, and they wouldn't sit next to us on the school bus. Well, to escape from my problems, I read science fiction. I loved to read science fiction, all about the future. And I wished upon the first star each night that my dreams would come true and we would be rescued and we would have a home to live in. Well, one day I stumbled upon a strategy to teach myself about positive thinking and practical and practical techniques for overcoming life's problems. I discovered my own inner compass and began to turn my hopeless life in a new direction. And I tell all about that in the Silver Linings book. Well, that strategy was the same one I used to help us overcome the tragedy of Challenger and create the Challenger Center. The idea was like seeing a bright light radiate from behind a dark cloud, a silver lining. Well, it's now 25 years later. I've also written with two famous authors, Kevin Anderson and Rebecca Maesta. I've written a series of science fiction stories about the Star Challengers. In these novels, you will meet five courageous teenagers selected by the mysterious Commander Zota for a special adventure to fly into the future to a real moon base in trouble, to the space station and to an asteroid all simulations offered by the Challenger Centers. Well, in Moon Base Crisis, some of you have already read this book. You will meet JJ, a feisty and adventurous girl who dreams of walking on the moon, but finds adventure even she could not imagine on the far side of the moon. And her younger brother, a sci-fi enthusiast who cracks jokes and walks with the help of crutches, but in the weightless environment of space, gains confidence lost after that car accident. King is a leader, an Eagle Scout, whose charm and skills are important to everyone's survival. And Song Yi, the daughter of a diplomat from South Korea and a bit spoiled, as you can imagine, chauffeured around in limousines. But this poor little girl has no friends or pets until she meets the other Star Challengers. Well, in the second book, hot off, hot off the press and being published, Space Station Crisis, you will meet Tony, a gymnast whose skills are sorely needed when aliens attack his, <laughs> when aliens attack them at the space station. And you'll meet his and learn about his attraction to JJ. We're also writing the third book now, Asteroid Crisis, where the Star Challengers have to prevent three asteroids from striking Earth and stop an alien invasion at the same time. Oh, they're busy. <laughs> well, the books have been well received enthusiastically with endorsements from Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin and Sally Ride. I bet you know who they are. So, in my life, I've known what it feels like to be rejected and teased and bullied. But I've also had some really good deal opportunities like going to the Super Bowl, watching my son fly an F-16 over the Super Bowl, having dinner with a president at the White House, visiting kings and presidents in other countries, and talking to celebrities. But nothing is more rewarding to me than being a teacher and talking to students just like you and learning about your dreams and your wishes. So, may your best dreams come true for you, for all of you. God bless.